Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel and I'm continuing my series of top 10 lists. I'm doing my top 10 movies of each year starting with my birth year leading up and going through 2018 and right now I'm doing my top 10 movies of 1983 but before I get to the top 10 list I have several honorable mentions and they are The Evil Dead, Easy Money, Cujo, Christine, A Christmas Story, Revenge of the Ninja, Videodrome, and Screwballs. All great movies, just couldn't make my top 10 list. But at number 10, we have Return of the Jedi. Uh, this was the third and final movie in the original trilogy before we got the prequels and now the new trilogy. Um, I've always been a huge fan of the original trilogy. Uh, they're all perfect movies in my opinion. A lot of people point towards uh, Empire Strikes Back as being the best. In my opinion, uh, A New Hope is my favorite of the original trilogy. Uh, I did do a ranking of all those movies on my channel somewhere, I do believe. If not, uh, let me know in the comment section below and then I'll be, I will be redoing it anyway after I watch the ninth installment of the franchise. But uh, number 10 is Return of the Jedi. Number nine is Risky Business. This is a fantastic movie. You have um, Tom Cruise, um, Rebecca De Mornay, uh, Joe Pantiano, if I'm saying his last name right. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm probably not pronouncing it right, but I know who he is. He's been in a lot of movies. Um, it is a fantastic movie. You have uh, him who is getting ready to graduate and he's trying to pick a college to go to. He has multiple options because he's a smart kid, but he ends up screwing up and running a basically a whorehouse out of his parents' house. And uh, it's a lot of laughs. Uh, Rebecca De Mornay in this movie. Uh, she's just, she's flat out gorgeous. I love her. I love her movies. Uh, this is one of my favorites. Um, I really loved her uh, part in American Reunion. It's freaking great. Um, she still looked amazing. Uh, but yeah, Risky Business is a great teen uh, comedy. And uh, definitely check it out if you haven't seen it. Number eight is Porky's 2, The Next Day. This is the follow-up to the first movie. And it follows Pee-wee and his friends uh, after Pee-wee. And sorry, spoiler alert, but Pee-wee finally loses his virginity. And they all ask him how it is. And uh, from there, uh, they want to put on a play uh, for Shakespeare. But there are some people in the community that don't think a Indian and a white woman should be uh, kissing and being in a play together. So there's a lot of drama around there. And in the middle, you get a lot of laughs. Uh, many of the laughs involve the KKK, which is freaking hysterical. Uh, there's a huge dinner scene, which is freaking hilarious. Uh, uh, Bobby, did you get my cherry again? If you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about. But it, it's a great follow-up to the original movie. And uh, you definitely check it out if you haven't seen it. The number seven is The Outsiders. I love this movie. Um, I just read the book uh, for the first time. And there are two different versions of this movie. Now, the version you guys are used to, along with me, is the theatrical version. But there's another version out there. You can find it on YouTube where it follows the book to a T. And uh, that's the version that uh, a lot of people were wanting but didn't get. Uh, and even though I like the, the version from the book, it just had way too much music in it. It's like almost every scene, there's a song in the scene. and It just got to be annoying after a while. And, I really enjoy the theatrical version. I wouldn't have minded the 
extended version, uh, if it cut out some of the music, uh, and then it, it just it would have just, just been fine. Uh, but ultimately, the theatrical version, in my opinion, is better. But The Outsiders, number seven. Number six is War Games. Number five is Mr. Mom. 220, 221, whatever it takes. Uh, Michael Keaton, Terry Garr. Uh, Keaton uh, works in an auto plant, and he is subsequently laid off. Sorry, that's my phone. He is laid off, and so his wife decides to uh, try and go back to work. They make a bet to see who gets the job first. She ultimately gets the job going back into advertising, and so he plays Mr. Mom, and a lot of crazy things unfold uh, when it comes to the house, taking the kids to school. It's a lot of fun. It's it's a great uh, great comedy in the early eighties. Uh, Michael Keaton delivers, in my opinion. Uh, Christopher Lloyd is in this movie as well. Uh, it's got a great cast, great story. The kid, the child actors in the movies uh, are really great, and it's just a lot of fun. So definitely check out Mr. Mom. It is my number five. Number four is National Lampoon's Vacation. This is a classic movie. Chevy Chase, Bebe D'Angelo, Anthony Michael Hall, and Dana Barron are set to go from Chicago to California to Wally World. And along the way, they run into many obstacles. They get lost in St. Louis. Uh, they have to uh, uh, take a aunt back home to Phoenix uh, who dies. She ultimately gets strapped to the hood, which is hilarious. Uh, Chevy Chase is one of his defining roles. You have some great cameos uh, from Eugene Levy and John Candy. And this is just a lot of fun. Definitely check it out. Number three is Scarface. Number two is Terms of Endearment. And my number one favorite movie of 1983 is another Eddie Murphy movie called Treading Places, uh, starring Dan Aykroyd, Eddie Murphy, Jamie Lee Curtis, Don Helm Elliott. It's a great movie. It is about a rich man, Winthorpe, who um, works for these uh, stockbrokers who he helps trade, buy and sell certain products, orange juice, gold, and whatnot. Well, they decide one day to see if they could replace Winthorpe with a simpleton from the street. And along comes Billy Ray Valentine. And so they basically switch them uh, places where he is uh, arrested and put in jail and thrown out on the streets. And Billy Ray Valentine takes over his position to see if he could do a better or equal job than what Winthorpe did. And the whole entire time, they make this bet. It's for a dollar. And yes, this is a Christmas comedy because it takes place on Christmas. This is a fantastic comedy. Paul Gleason is also in this movie. He plays a great role in this movie. And you have a cameo from uh, Jim Belushi, the younger brother to John. And this is just a lot of laughs and a lot of fun. Jamie Lee Curtis plays the prostitute. Uh, yes, there is a scene where you get to see her topless, blah, blah, blah. Uh, she's beautiful. Don't get me wrong. She's freaking beautiful. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's an amazing movie. And it is definitely my pick for the best movie of 1983. So in the comment section below, give me your top ten movies of 1983. If you don't have a top ten, then just name me a few movies that you love from 1983. Other than that, I thank you guys for watching this top 10 list. Stay tuned for yet one more top 10 list for today. It'll be my top 10 movies of 1984. But I thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you're new to the channel. And share these videos with all your family and friends. I appreciate each and every one of you for supporting my channel. And check you later.